There's 104 days of summer vacation. Today we'll cover the series Phineas and Ferb from beginning to the end. The show follows the adventures of two stepbrothers, Phineas Flynn and Ferb Fetcher, their sister Candace, and an evil scientist, Dr. Heinz Doofenshmirtz, during the 104 days of summer vacation. So sit back, relax, and let's kick it. Firstly, let's talk about the family dynamics in Phineas and Ferb. Phineas, the son of Linda, and Ferb, the son of Lawrence, initially come from different backgrounds due to their parents' previous unsuccessful marriages. However, despite their unique family situation, they all manage to create a beautiful and loving bond throughout the show. They prove that blood relations aren't the only thing that defines a family. Each day, Phineas and Ferb come up with elaborate and ambitious projects to make the most of their summer break. These projects often involve constructing extraordinary inventions or creating grand-scale activities and experiences. They're accompanied by their group of friends, including their older sister Candace, who tries to expose their activities to their parents, but always fails due to the projects conveniently disappearing or going awry just before their parents can see them. Phineas is the epitome of a glasses half full kind of guy, always rocking a positive attitude and an imagination that knows no bounds. He is the ultimate thrill seeker, constantly turning mundane situations into mind blowing adventures. Aren't you a little young to be a roller coaster engineer? Yes. Yes, I am. In fact, he's the mastermind behind all the crazy ideas and mind boggling inventions that keep us on the edge of our seats. Ferb, on the other hand, is more of a quiet and reserved type of guy, contrasting Phineas's outgoing and energetic nature. But don't let his calm demeanor fool you, Ferb is the one who brings Phineas's wild ideas to life with his incredible engineering skills. He's the genius behind all those crazy contraptions they create during their entire vacation. Even though he may seem laid back, Ferb is always ready to lend a hand to Phineas and share his technological know-how. Together, they make an unbeatable team, combining their strengths to make their adventures truly epic. As for Candace, she embodies the essence of a typical teenager. She's always on a mission to expose her brother's extraordinary activities to their parents. It's no secret that she gets frustrated time and again, as her attempts to reveal their mischief often end in failure. It seems like their creations have a knack for disappearing or going unnoticed just moments before her parents arrive. However, beneath her exasperation lies genuine care and love for her brothers. Candace has her moments of sisterly affection and protection, reminding us that family bonds are complex and filled with ups and downs. Despite her constant struggle to prove their antics, she ultimately wants what's best for Phineas and Ferb, even if it means navigating the chaos and hilarity that ensues. Now, this is not the only family dynamic in the show, though. There is a whole other portion of the show that involves the tragic life story of Dr. Heinz Doofenshmirtz and his struggle to have a stable and loving family. Even though Heinz is depicted as a joke character throughout the show, there are certain episodes that showcase his miserable childhood and motivations. So let's delve into his misery and see what he has been through. Doofenshmirtz was born in the fictional European city of Drusselstein, and his misfortune began when both of his parents failed to show up at his birth. Wait, both of them? Since his birth, he had a condition that made him smell bad, and unfortunately, this resulted in many people, including his own parents, wanting to keep their distance from him. Doofenshmirtz's childhood was plagued by constant bullying, from having sand kicked in his face by big black boots, to enduring water poured on his head by Grolinda, who secretly had a crush on him, he faced relentless torment. One of the most traumatic moments in Doofenshmirtz's life happened when his dad asked him to take a leap off a high dive. It was supposed to be a traditional test to see if he was a real man or a wussy, but the judgmental eyes around him made it impossible for him to go through with it. That's when they started calling him a schnitzel, and he lost the respect of his parents. From then on, things only got worse. His parents grew more distant and his dad even disowned him, refusing to acknowledge him as his own son. This is what eventually led to him being abandoned in the woods, where he was raised by ocelots. To cope with his misery, Doofenshmirtz turned to science as a source of solace. He participated in a science fair and created his first innator. Unfortunately, his efforts went unappreciated as he lost to a baking soda volcano not once, but twice. Fed up with the disappointment, he decided to call it quits and move on from competing in science fairs. Later on, he landed one in the dunking booth, but not as the guy getting dunked, instead the ball that people threw. During his duty hours, he found a balloon and painted a face on it with a long-lasting spray he invented. And that's how Heinz got his first best friend, Balloony. Later, his parents accepted him back, but not for the right reasons. They had to give up their lawn gnome due to tough times, so his father made Heinz take its place, standing motionless for hours on end. 
It was pretty harsh, like, he wasn't even allowed to eat. One night during his gnome duty, Augusta Wind took away his only friend, Balloonie, and he couldn't reach it as he was frozen in place by his father. To make matters worse, his parents had a baby boy named Roger who received all the love and care that Heinz so longed for. Since their mother had prepared dresses for a girl expecting a daughter, Heinz was forced to wear them to school, leading to constant mockery and a deepening sense of misery. As Heinz received no support from his parents, his younger brother Roger effortlessly stole all the love and attention. In an attempt to win his mother's affection, Heinz spent his entire yearly allowance on a gift for her, only to have it given to Roger. To add salt to his wounds, Roger even went as far as to write his name on both the gift and their mother, asserting ownership over them exclusively. One day, his parents played a deceitful trick on him, sending him on an errand to a store that turned out to be a setup. It was a ploy to ship him off to America as they hoped to finally be rid of him. After arriving in America, Heinz finished high school and sold broadwurst on streets to make a living. Heinz attempted to find his true self through art, but his dream was shattered when his brother Roger, who happened to be in America too by chance, accidentally ruined his masterpiece. Undeterred, he entered a poetry contest, only to once again be defeated, this time by a baking soda volcano again. So after his girlfriend got snatched by the dude with those massive hands, Heinz finally mustered up enough guts to jump back into the dating game. And guess who he ended up with? None other than a young Linda Flynn, who later became a pop star. She did become a pop star later! On their date, he straight up tells her about his ultimate goal, taking over the world. I mean, can't you blame the guy? And you know what? Linda actually gives him some solid advice. She tells him to go for it and start small, maybe by conquering the tri-state area or something. Prompted by his aspirations, he joined an evil school right after high school. It's hard to believe they even have a school like that, teaching you all sorts of shady stuff. But guess what? His plans didn't pan out as expected. Dr. Givarlik, one of his teachers, ended up flunking him, which forced them to attend a community college instead. While at the community college, he crossed paths with Charlene, a woman of wealth and privilege. They unexpectedly fell in love and against all odds ended up getting married. The couple welcomed a daughter named Vanessa, whom Heinz cherished dearly. However, for a whopping 16 years, Heinz struggled to win her affection. It didn't help that he threw terrible birthday parties for her year after year, until finally, after much trial and error, he managed to get one just right. Better late than never, I suppose. Surprisingly, Heinz and Charlene broke up when Vanessa was four, mainly due to their diverging life plans. And of course, the sock puppet incident. Despite the split, they remained on good terms, sharing custody of their daughter and arranging family reunions to provide Vanessa with love and support. It's theorized that Heinz put his evil schemes aside during his marriage to prioritize his family, which is why Charlene remains oblivious to his villainous past. Once the divorce was finalized, Heinz needed to secure a new place to live before the alimony payments began. He ended up settling for a penthouse, which would later become the infamous Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated. He managed to get the place at a reasonable price, mainly because of the constant noise from passing ships in the area. But hey, apart from that minor inconvenience, the place was massive. Because of the nefarious inventions, the organization without a cool acronym, or OWCA for short, saw Heinz as a legitimate threat and assigned a spy to monitor his activities. That spy turned out to be none other than Perry the Platypus, who not only led a double life as a secret agent, but also served as Phineas and Ferb's pet. Talk about a multi-talented platypus. Although they often find themselves at odds and engaged in fierce battles, Agent P and Dr. Heinz occasionally surprise us with moments of understanding and even cooperation. Heinz, now an evil villain, spends his days seeking revenge against those who wronged him, including his brother Roger, the mayor of Danville. But here's the catch. No matter what he tries, he can't seem to succeed thanks to Perry the Platypus always getting in his way. He also aims to win over his daughter by always going out of his way to make her feel loved. His mission to seek a stable family and to take over the tri-state area continues throughout the show. In the episode Last Day of Summer, Vanessa reveals that she has secured an internship at OWCA, the organization dedicated to stopping evil schemes, but she faces a predicament. Being the daughter of Dr. Heinz Doofenshmirtz, one of their sworn enemies, she is unable to join their ranks. However, Vanessa sees the good in her father and believes he has a pure heart. In a heartfelt moment, she convinces Dr. Heinz to let go of his evil ways and embrace his potential for goodness. After facing the consequences of his evil deeds, Heinz finds himself assigned to community service. To everyone's surprise, he becomes a teacher at Denville High, where his own daughter, Vanessa, attends school. 
As surprising as it may sound, Heinz manages to secure a job at OWCA, the organization that strictly recruits animal agents. How does he pull it off, you ask? Well, it turns out that his unusual upbringing in the wilderness, being raised by ocelots, gives him a unique edge. He is considered part ocelot himself, which makes him eligible for the job. Now let's talk about some interesting theories surrounding the show. Remember how I mentioned that despite Candace's persistent efforts to expose her brothers, she always seems to fall short. It's like a never-ending cycle of near misses and failed attempts. It's gotten so bizarre that people have started coming up with theories to explain it all. One popular theory is that Linda, their mom, actually knows about the inventions but deliberately turns a blind eye to them. Let me explain. You won't believe what Phineas and Ferb managed to accomplish during those epic 104 days of summer. They embark on countless adventures, creating all sorts of mind-blowing inventions. And get this, their projects often involve the entire town, and sometimes even the entire city. It's so huge that they even get interviewed and make the news. It's pretty wild when you think about it. Just about everyone in town knows about Phineas and Ferb's incredible inventions, except for Linda. It's like she's living in her own little bubble. But wait, there's more. It turns out that even Lawrence and Linda's own parents stumble upon some of the boys' crazy inventions. For instance, Lawrence and the flying carpet, their grandpa and the replica plane, and even the granny with the roller skating shoes. In one episode, Heinz's innator ends up zapping Phineas and Ferb, turning them into adorable little babies. Candace, being ever the dutiful sister, takes a picture and sends it to Linda, their mom. But here's the mind-boggling part. Linda receives the picture and acts all nonchalant, thanking Candace for sending an old photo. Come on, Linda, you know that picture was impossible because the boys were already walking and talking when they first met. And to make things even more confusing, when Candace brings the baby versions of Phineas and Ferb inside the house, Linda suddenly claims that they can't be her sons and are just random kids who resemble them. Yeah, you might be onto something there. The evidence certainly points towards Linda being aware of Phineas and Ferb's inventions and simply playing innocent. But why would she do that? Well, one popular theory is that it's all part of the show's comedic brilliance. By maintaining this balance between the fantastical and mundane aspects, the creators keep us laughing and engaged. It could also be that Linda is aware but pretends not to notice in order to encourage their creativity and independence further. Another popular theory is that she is under the influence of Dr. Heinz's Forgetinator, which represses her memories. Whatever it is, it always keeps us on the edge of our seats. Later in the episode, Phineas and Ferb's Quantum Boogaloo, Candace actually succeeds in her mission to bust her brothers when she's 30 years old by using a time machine to go back to their first holiday. But here's the crazy part. Her small change ends up causing a world where evil Heinz Doofenshmirtz rules. Realizing the gravity of her actions, Candace goes back in time once again to stop herself from busting her brothers and save the world. Phew! In the end, the 15-year-old Candace goes to the future with Phineas and Ferb, where Linda finally learns the truth. But here's the kicker. Phineas and Ferb are already in their 30s, living their own lives, so Linda doesn't seem to be too bothered by it all. Still, it's a big moment for Candace, finally getting some closure on her decades-long quest. In the same episode, we see an older Dr. Heinz, after putting his evil ways behind him, playing checkers with Perry the Platypus inside his evil corporation. It's a funny and heartwarming moment that highlights the unique bond between the ultimate villain and his undercover nemesis. Moving on, while the show primarily revolves around their friendship and shared adventures, there are several relationship dynamics depicted throughout the series. Here are a few notable ones. Isabella, part of the Fireside Girls and a good friend of Phineas and Ferb, has had a crush on Phineas for a long while now. She's always helping out with their crazy projects and low-key trying to get Phineas to notice her. Phineas, oblivious as ever, doesn't seem to catch on to Isabella's feelings. She eventually gives up on the idea sometime during their summer adventures. But guess what? Right around that time, Phineas starts developing some serious feelings for Isabella. Talk about bad timing right there. He finally musters up the courage and spills the beans about his crush. On the last day of summer, they sort things out and decide to go to the same college as a couple. Then there's Candace and Jeremy's relationship. It's like a never-ending roller coaster. They're constantly breaking up and getting back together, adding a ton of drama to their story. On the other hand, Dr. Doofenshmirtz's ex-wife, Charlene, and their daughter, Vanessa, also make appearances. They bring their own dynamics to the mix and spice things up even more. Speaking of Vanessa, Ferb also had a crush on her throughout the show and did his best to win her over, despite being much younger than her. 
Ultimately, through a series of events, he manages to get together with her in the same episode. The final episode of the show, Phineas and Ferb, is called Last Day of Summer. And it's a special one-hour episode that brings the series to a close. Phineas and Ferb, being the creative geniuses they are, embark on a mission to make the absolute most of their final day of summer vacation. You can expect the usual epic and imaginative adventures that we've come to love from these two. They create one last giant contraption that encapsulates all the other mini contraptions they made throughout the summer. Kind of like a tribute to their own imagination. For context, this episode happens before Heinz left his evil ways behind, so he is still in a struggle to take over the world, while Candace is still hellbent on exposing her brothers. It is surprising that throughout the entire show, Candace and Heinz never really interacted with each other until the very last episode. Candace visits her friend Vanessa to return the DVDs and vents to her about her failed busting attempt throughout the show. She stumbles upon Dr. Heinz for the first time and sets off the do over inator, which resets the day in a never ending loop. Heinz made it so he can rule out all the errors in his way to take over the tri state area, while Candace sees this as an opportunity to bust her brothers. The day is reset and both of them now have another chance to do it all over again. However, no matter how hard they try, they always fail to deliver. The day keeps resetting and they keep failing. But after like 23 loops, they realize that with each loop, a part of this world is getting erased one by one and eventually the whole world will be erased if they don't stop. Heinz tries to turn off the innator, but a rift appears and sucks it in. Heinz just assumes that since the innator is erased from existence, the loops will stop. Meanwhile, Candace tries to seek help from her siblings, but much to her dismay, another rift appears and sucks her brothers in. But who are Phineas and Ferb? Horrified to see that her mother doesn't even remember having two sons, Candace tries to explain the situation, but she is still very confused. The main characters of the show are literally erased from this world. Well, not entirely. Everything that is seemingly erased is being teleported to a colorless void that resembles Danville, which means that the do over innator is also there. When the day resets again, Heinz decides to make another innator to fix the space time continuum and even seeks the help of Perry and Vanessa. But before they can finish, the day is started over again. Eventually, they manage to make it in time, and now all they have to do is activate it. Candace, on the other hand, alongside the whole gang, gets sucked into the rift to rescue her brothers where she comes across the innator. She can't turn it off in the void because then they will be stuck there forever, so the gang makes a catapult and travels through a rift back to their world. However, before both Heinz can finish his rambling and Candace can activate their side of the innator, the day keeps resetting. Finally, in an epic side-to-side -side showdown, both of them press the button at the same time, and the world is saved. However, Perry then discovers that Heinz's innator was not plugged in, meaning it was Candace who really saved the world. The series concludes with a heartwarming scene in the backyard, where Phineas, Candace, and their friends gather to savor the last moments of their summer. They sit together sipping orange juice and fondly recall their favorite memories from their adventures. Meanwhile, Perry the Platypus, Dr. Doofenshmirtz, Vanessa, and their faithful robot Norm have their own gathering after Heinz realizes that his daughter's affection is more important to him than seeking revenge. They enjoy some delicious muffins while reflecting on their unique journey and sharing their own nostalgic moments. Candace has finally given up her chase and Heinz has finally managed to form a family that he always wanted. It's a delightful and heartening conclusion, showcasing the enduring friendships and cherished memories that were created during their eventful summer together. So, this was the entire timeline of Phineas and Ferb. If you enjoyed the video, drop us a like and subscribe to Cartoon Mania for more thrilling and exciting content like this on your feed. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace!